Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and this is the annual Connor Long Rifles Living History and Antique Arms Fair. Each year, this show is hosted by the Connor Long Rifles Muzzleloading Club at the Hamilton County 4-H Fairgrounds in Noblesville, Indiana. The show has over 240 tables selling handcrafted accoutrements, antique arms, blacksmith creations, horn carvings, pottery, black powder supplies, and so much more that come from the years 1700 to 1899. In 2023 here, this is the 40th annual year for this show, which is pretty exciting. I love to see those numbers starting to tick up, especially for these local club hosted events here in the United States. This year, Saturday admission was $7, Sunday admission was $5, and a two day pass would only cost you 10 bucks. The show ran from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, February 18th, and went from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday, February 19th. You can expect similar hours next year in 2024 for the show, but the dates will be switched up because of how calendars are working. <laughs> Like I said, this is one of my absolute favorite shows to get started with for the year. It's an interesting show because when we compare it to maybe some of the larger shows that happen across the country, this show might seem a little bit smaller, but the density of interesting stuff at this particular event is sometimes surprising. Um, if you have kind of a list running in your head of of antiques, of high quality items, handmade stuff that you are looking for, or if you're just looking to get started in muzzleloading, this is a great show to see all of that at once. There were folks there that I talked to that were purchasing their first muzzleloader, their first supplies, like a bag and a horn, you know, a patch knife, kind of the introductory stuff. And then there were friends that I talked to that have been looking for holy grail pieces for their collection that were able to find them and find and see at least a few of them at this show, which is something I love to hear. Uh, that's something that I think is really special about these muzzleloading events around the country. If you can get to them, and you have a list of something that you'd like to pick up, something like you'd like to add to your kit or add to your range box or just add, you know, as decor to your home, you're going to be able to find it at this show. There were people traveling from Illinois, from Indiana, of course, from Kentucky, Ohio, a couple people from Tennessee even at this event set up to display their wares. So there is a, a wide radius of people attending these shows. Um, especially the Connor Long Rifles show here. And it, it really kept up, I think, that tradition of, of quality that it, it continues to produce year over year. Yeah. 
This was the first show for the Connor Long Rifles event here in about two years. Uh, we had two years of cancellations there, uh, but it's nice to see the event come back and, and really in full force. Uh, all the vendors, I think, were excited and maybe a little bit nervous. It's always nerve wracking coming back to a show after there's been some cancellations. There are always concerns about the ebb and flow of public attendance here. Uh, that really wasn't an issue, at least for the first part of Saturday. From the show open at 9 a.m. here till about 2 p.m., the show was just packed. I mean, you were just kind of shuffling through the aisles trying to make your way around the show. Um, after 2 p.m., you know, at a lot of these muzzleloading shows, you notice kind of a lunch hour or lunch couple hours slow down as people filter in and out, grabbing lunch with friends and, and other club members that they've met at the event. Uh, I will say that the crowd really kind of started to really die down after that two o'clock mark. Um, but it was still nice. There were still people coming through and I was able to meet and actually have a, had a chance to talk with many of you that attended the show after that kind of Saturday morning crunch. Sunday was about the same. The crowd was pretty consistent, but it wasn't nearly as packed as it was uh, that pre-lunch hour, a uh, few hours on Saturday. I had a lot of people write, and we saw quite a few uh, people commenting after the show that Saturday is a great day to go and catch up with friends, but Sunday is a nice day to go and shop because it wasn't as crowded. Now, I think the attendance for the show was still pretty good, uh, especially coming after uh, two years of cancellations here. I hope to see it increase as we go into next year, and I fully expect to see this event come back next year, hopefully with a bigger crowd.
I'd like to thank each and every one of you that stopped by my father and I's table to sit down and talk for a little bit. I know that Saturday was a real crunch, but I really appreciate everybody who stuck around to chat with me. I think I went through my thermos of tea both days, um, talking to muzzleloading enthusiasts, which was really great. So many of you came out with and shared stories of your different experiences and, and when you got into muzzleloading and what you're enjoying now. That's the kind of thing that really is energizing for me at least. So thank you each and every one of you that stopped by to talk. I, I ran out of the stickers that I had to hand out, so I'm hoping to bring some more to the next events this year. I always try to budget a little bit with each paycheck when I know an event is coming up so I can go out and support the vendors and the craftspeople that attend these events and add some of the stuff to my kit and to my gear uh, to continue kind of my learning experience as I'm getting more and more involved, especially with the historic side of things. Something I really focused on uh, at this event in particular was getting a few supplies for uh, making some things for the rest of the year. So some of this stuff is gonna be kind of raw material stuff and then other, other parts of it's gonna be, you know, kind of ready to go. Uh, but first up, I picked up this beautiful woven uh, I'm going to turn it into some uh, some powder horn straps or some bag straps. I, I picked this up from Navio Acalini. Um, he's a bow maker and he's he's built a lot of muzzleloaders. If you're familiar with the NMLRA events, he runs the archery range or is the chief range officer of that archery range. Um, and he's been passing on a few things um, that he just hasn't gotten around to using. So I'm excited to apply some of this to some projects here this spring and summer. Not associated at all with the strap I picked up from Navio, but Navio dropped off uh, one of his old eight millimeter cameras for me to add to kind of my old camera collection. Um, just like the powder cans and things that you see here, I've been collecting a lot of my um, and holding on to my grandfather's and my father's old film cameras just because I really enjoy collecting that kind of stuff. I like old stuff. And so cameras for me have been kind of a thing along with muzzleloading that I've been able to keep in the family, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Navio knew that about me and, and knew I'm kind of a camera junkie and, and brought this by for me to add to the collection. So this is, the case says Bell and Howell, but this is a neat little eight millimeter camera here. I'm trying to see. Okay, on the top here it says Keystone Boston 24 Mass Turret 8. It's an Olympic K35 made in America. I know this isn't muzzleloading related, but I wanted to share this uh, because Navio actually shared a picture with me as well that I'll, I'll post up on the screen here though. Uh, but this was Navio's GoPro uh, when he was a younger man. Along with some of the supplies that we've been talking about, uh, something that I wanted to do is make my own gourd canteens. Something I was looking for to go along with those was a set of corks. And uh, thankfully the Apple Cart Creations uh, family there and their business had a few corks at a very fair price and I'm excited to use uh, for those projects here later this. I've been wanting to experiment with some hand sewing of some gear and accoutrements and thankfully the Eagle Talon Traders, uh, Brandon Scott proprietor, um, had some nice cotton fabric that's gonna work well for me to test out some hand sewing on some market wallets. Uh, he didn't have any linen at the time, but this cotton, uh, to my understanding, is still pretty well documented and is, is, is the right color and it's the right texture really to work for at least some prototyped market wallets here. As we get teased with spring here, the shooting season is really coming kind of back in full force in my mind. So I picked up some spare ramrods from Mike Eater at Flintlocks LLC here in Indiana. Uh, for my Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle. I always like to have a few extras, have a few spares. Uh, so I picked up one from Mike to try out that has a, a brass end on here. And then just a couple um, just plain hickory ones that I'll uh, apply an end to if I feel like I need to. Um, typically I have my range rod pretty close, so I'm not necessarily worried about having a threaded end. So I kind of wanted to just try it out, um, you know, just having a plain rod like we see in quite a few of the originals that are out there. On that note, I know last fall um, and last, even into last summer, there was conversations about uh, flints becoming hard to find. I wanna say that, and you probably saw it in the footage really too, uh, that flints were pretty plentiful here at the Connor Long Rifle Show. I'm interested to see how plentiful they are at the Kalamazoo Living History Show, but it seems like the, the fluctuation in flints that we saw last year is kind of stabilized. I know the prices have gone up a little bit here, uh, but we're still able to find flints at least at this show. 
Next up, I wanted to share some bullets that my friend Keith from the Backyard Muzzleloaders Facebook group uh, brought by for me to try out. These are Precision Rifles Dead Center Bullets. Uh, one of these here, one pack is 195 grains, it looks like, and the other is 240 grains. So um, I'm gearing up and getting some more powders to try out and some more bullets to try out. So I'd like to thank Keith for handing me these. He's not associated with Precision Rifle or anything, uh, but he just wanted to see these tested out on the channel. So thank you very much, Keith. And, and check out the Backyard Muzzleloaders Facebook group if you're into that kind of thing. Another small gift I was graciously given at the event this year was this small horn powder measure from Scott Kane. Scott and I joke a lot because of his son Jonah Kane and, and uh, how much he makes and how, uh, how far he gets every year. He's always traveling it feels like and, and Scott is always kind of in tow uh, carrying all of Jonah's heavy stuff it seems like. But uh, Scott gave me this. He said it's a, a scrap piece off of some of what Jonah has been doing um, and Scott likes to tinker around with a lot of the same stuff that Jonah does. So this is about a 60 grain measure. So we're gonna tinker with this and maybe reduce it a little bit to get it working with that Kibler as a nice little powder measure for us. Thank you, Scott, really appreciate this. My biggest purchase for the Connor Long Rifle Show um, was this handmade or hand woven rope. Um, something that is a little bit smaller in a kit it is a, a series of ropes or a single long rope like this one is. Um, it's very useful to have in your trekking or living history kit. You kind of use it to tie up your blankets or your gear and then use it to, to hold up a tarp or something or, or carry a lot of your kit. It's something that I, I've actually pulled uh, some modern rope um, out of the, the shop here to test out with my kit, knowing that I wanted to find a, a contemporary handmade rope like this one to add to my kit. Um, but thankfully, I didn't have to look very far this year. I picked this up uh, secondhand from Ron Vale at the Connor Long Rifle Show here. I'm really excited to get this with my bag and with my blankets and start experimenting with carrying this and, and utilizing it out in the woods this year. It's really beautiful. I had a friend look at it. Um, I think there's some horsehair woven in here. It's just a nice, it's just a neat thing to add. And I think, you know, something like rope is often seen as, as maybe a little small thing in your kit, but um, I feel good knowing that I'm adding you know, a natural, you know, handmade period piece to my kit when I can. So thank you, Ron. I really appreciate this. And uh, I've been looking at it every day since I picked it up. So thank you. Along with the stuff that I purchased here, I wanted to share some event flyers that uh, some folks handed to me that wanted me to, to get the word out. And that's a big part of, of why I do what I do here at I Love Muzzle Learning is to share and promote these events at, at no cost to the event holders. So if there's something out there that you uh, have an event coming up or something and you want promoted or want shared on the website and on the channel, please just shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleting at gmail.com and, and we'll get it out there for you. The first here is the uh, rack card for the five medals at the Trace event this year for 2023. They shifted dates from the fall to the spring. So we're excited for uh, May 6th and 7th here as the card says. And uh, we'll have some, some close ups of this for you to look at and as well at ilovemuzzleloading.com. A really great little event to get out to, um, really personable, I think. If you're wanting to go and learn from some historians that are, are really dedicated in what they do and really care about muzzleloading, um, it's hosted at the Stone Trace Regulators Club grounds. So there's a ton of muzzleloading enthusiasts there to chat with as well. If you're wanting to learn about muzzleloading or living history or both, I, I can't recommend it enough. The next one I have here is the Fort Greenville Muzzleloaders Flyer for the year here. Uh, this on the front side has the Spring Rendezvous and Shoot for May 20th and 21st, 2023. This is gonna be at Greenville, Ohio. Uh, it's at Seagrist's range. I'll have a, a photo of this on the screen now so you can take a look at it. The front side here has their spring rendezvous and shoot, which is one of their big events for the year, I was told. And on the back, we have a full 2023 schedule. So if you're near Greenville, Ohio, this is a club that I think you're gonna enjoy and, and you have an opportunity here to get involved with a, an entire calendar of events. I wanna to say too that they have rates for members and non-members. So if you're not necessarily looking to join a club right now, um, the Fort Greenville muzzleloaders here are gonna let you come and participate and enjoy it all the same and kind of try it out and see if it's the kind of thing you wanna get involved in. There's some contact information here on the back. We'll have it at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Uh, but your contact point is going to be Andrew K for the Fort Greenville Muzzleloaders and their series of events through the year. 
Last but not least, the Tippecanoe County Historical Association here. You'll know them primarily for the Feast of the Hunter's Moon, which is continually one of the largest living history events in the country each year. Um, it's in West Lafayette, Indiana, if you're interested in that kind of thing and haven't heard about it. But the association that puts on the feast has a calendar of events through the entire year and of note for muzzleloading enthusiasts. Coming up here on August 8th, 2023, so you have some time to plan here, is a presentation on Tippecanoe County and Indiana State gun makers of note. This is gonna be presented by Rick Conwell and Jeff Yeager. Jeff recently published and is nearly sold out now of his Indiana Gunmakers book, which was just published, I think, in 2019. I'm really excited for Jeff and the success that he's had with his book. That's no small feat to bring something like that, to not only do the research, but bring it to print and then almost sell out of it. Uh, really exciting, really neat, and I encourage you, uh, if you're local to this area, and even if you're not, seek out your local historical societies and associations and, and reach out to them, talk to them. If you're the kind of person that wants to talk about muzzleloading, uh, I imagine that they're going to be welcome uh, to have you at one of their monthly or, or weekly or bi-monthly events. Uh, they're always looking for presentations, it seems like. So reach out and talk and, and become a part of your local history uh, if and when you can. I think it's important and it's always nice to see uh, an association like the TCHA, <laughs> um, you know, doing so much with their community. I hope that you've enjoyed the short tour I was able to give you of the event here. Again, it doesn't really uh, give you the same impact, the same feeling as being there, but I hope for those of you that can't get out and travel or maybe Noblesville is a little too far, that you've enjoyed it here. If you'd like to reach out to some of those artisans and craftspeople in the businesses that we talk about, that we mentioned in the video, please do help support the muzzleloading community as a whole and supports their families and their businesses. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out, please let me know, and I'll try to answer them the best I can about this event in particular. Really looking forward to the Connor Long Rifles show for 2024. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.